I like how they rub it. Life of Kai, F4, take one. All righty. So what does the word push mean to you? Push. Uh, the word push really means taking yourself and elevating it above where it is and out of your comfort zone. I have to do what is in my head. Otherwise, I won't be able to sleep at night. If I come back and I feel like I didn't actually give it my all and ride that edge of the sword, then I might as well not have gone out. I remember riding this one particular wave at Mavericks. Wasn't the biggest wave ever, but I did a turn, was able to do a very lofty, floaty alley-oop or backside 360. And when I landed, I landed with such confidence and it was so clean, it just felt easy. And that was like, okay, I gotta do that more often. I gotta find that feeling. That just kind of led me into the rest of the season to do that kind of surfing that I've been dreaming about my entire life. My headspace coming back from Mavericks was, I really gotta get going on these aerials. I think that's the future of big wave riding. And I've spoken a lot about it before. The difference is, is like, how could I keep approaching it so that I can actually make it happen? Because it sounds easy on paper, but I have to get some experience. And so I thought of places I could go to in order to hone my skill. Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and going in the terrain park. Even though I was doing the most simple snowboard tricks, it was really a good experience to get air awareness. And then headed down to Indo, waves that are perfect but aren't the same all the time. And getting used to going fast and then projecting these big rotations and spotting my landing. And then the next logical step would be Waco, Texas. Some place with even more consistent waves that I could practice on. The waves, they're all so different, but I had the same goal in mind, improve my aerial game so that I could put it onto a giant wave. We're in Jacksonville. <laughs> what? Dude. Gotta get, whoa. So they do fit my big head. Oh, this is exciting. First run. Oh my gosh. I've always loved snowboarding, but the hardest thing I could ever do is break myself away from the ocean, especially in the middle of the season, in order to get onto the powder. This time though, it was different. I wasn't just going for fun. I was actually going to try to figure out if I could do certain basic snowboarding maneuvers that would translate to a 50 foot wave. Okay, let's see here, cork and nine, 1260, and then, uh... Double cab 1440, it's probably gonna be my run. <laughs> 
the real idea was to just learn rotations that I haven't done on the water and really get comfortable being attached to a board and committed to a line, doing multiple tricks in a row. And I could just see if I did that enough times in practice, it would immediately translate into my big wave riding. <laughs> you know, in big waves, I know what I'm doing. I know the consequences of it, but like ice, man, I snowboarded like two times in the last 10 years. And uh, it's just, you know, getting in the groove again. I got into it fast. And I think it was because toe and surfing really translated well to snowboarding. Go figure. Well, that was my best run. Felt pretty easy. I felt I'd way, could have gone for the 180 out, 100%. The backflip really helps me get good rhythm. Yeah, stay in the rhythm. So then you're, so you're, first not, jump, so you're not doing this to set up. Just yeah, go yeah. hump, hump, and then you're set up and then go boom. Yep, yep. Do it. I wasn't looking for doubles or triple rotations this time around. I was looking for those single rotations and doing it with confidence. A few times when I hit really hard and I had to lay there and I could feel my collarbones kind of bend in for a second, I was like, why am I doing this? And then I thought about it. I'm like, if I could just nail some of these tricks and get really comfortable, I'll be able to do it down a big wave. I feel like it's just like trying to get better is so fun. I'm like scared of when I get old that all of a sudden I'm gonna just, when I'm not able to get like significantly better, I'm just gonna be like over it. <laughs> Cause that's like my main driving force is like, just get good constantly. Let's go! Felt so good. So good. We love progress. Yeah, Nano. Yeah, Kai. Thanks for uh, painting. My pleasure, man. The 505th board. <laughs> Uh, so right now we're at Puella Cannery and this is kind of the heart of the board builders on Maui and the best boards probably in the entire world are here in the jungles of Haiku. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Check it out. Grab it. That thing is sick looking. How's that nose? I mean, the spray came out super. It looks like a snowboard you buy. Yeah. Totally. Oh, this is crazy. So Rich and I are going on a crazy adventure. We're going down to Indonesia, and I think we're gonna be able to go down and really experiment with our surfing and kind of this alternative crafts. I think there's a huge potential to take what snowboarders have been doing in these parks and on these mountains and bring it into surfing. I guess to describe what this really is, this is a strap board. This is these inserts here is where we're gonna put the foot straps. Basically, you paddle in with the straps and what the straps do is they give you the advantage of not worrying about your feet flying away. And I think the art of aerial surfing without straps is keeping the board in control under your feet and doing radical maneuvers. Whereas this strap board is the idea is to spin to win, go as crazy as possible and not worry about your feet flying off. Oh, that's super sick. Nice. Sick. Oh, insane. Thank you. Yeah, guys.
Oh! I think those inside deep ones, you don't even wait for a set. No. Like, even that would have been so fun to hit. There's the ones that peek up right there, then a wall. Yeah, the little bigger, little bigger version of that. What are you gonna Going to Bali, Indonesia, the goal of the trip was applying all these tricks that I learned snowboarding onto water, but in a dynamic that is ever changing. No matter how perfect the ocean is, every single wave's different and you have to adapt on the spot. Being able to get the tricks down in small waves is crucial into doing it in big waves because in big waves, there's a lot more riding on it. It's not gonna be easy, but that's why I'm doing it because it's hard and because it's exciting. I feel like our mindset's the same, whereas we wanna push ourselves really hard and I feel like we do you know feed off each other in that way like I obviously see him doing what he does and the bar is unimaginably high so it just lets me push myself probably way farther than I would if he wasn't there coaching me. I felt like training getting better at what I want to get better at it was happening. What I got was more important than just trying to achieve goals, which I could hang out, have fun, ride waves, and get back to why I love surfing, which is the art of riding a wave with friends and family. You gotta keep her like cooled down, you know? Let's go. Oh my gosh. It's so good out there. kind of think we know where Kai's going and then he'll throw like some random curveball at us and he's always thinking like thinking about the next innovative sport he can do you know and that's what I love about him you know because the wheels never stop turning he's chasing his goals and dreams and it's so fun to be there and I'm so happy to be able to share that process with him and I feel like he's just getting the ball rolling. Oh my god. Dude, that was wild. Is that pretty big? To see the difference in between which manta was that, they have a spot on their belly and the spot is always different so it's like a finger fingerprint for a human uh, three meters we're about to go swim with some manta rays this is going to be a pretty unique experience let's do it The ocean is communicating. It has its own language. And if you speak it, you understand everything it's trying to tell you. If you don't, it's a foreign language. It might as well be Martian. You, you don't know it. But if you do speak that language, you're gathering all this information because it's telling you. Kai speaks that language. He knows water map. When you hover above the whole surfing world and you look down at what's going on, I don't think anybody comes close in terms of being that well-rounded. There's a lot of really professional, specific, high-level surfers, but when you look at the whole picture, there's, there's really nobody that's on the level that Kai is. The thing that is so distinctive about Kai is his freedom and his insistence in playing in all these different games at once. And he plays them all at a ridiculously high level. That cross-pollination of disciplines allows him to imagine performance levels on giant surf that nobody else is really dreaming of. Having an open mind really allows him to draw all this different information or little details from so many different sports and put that into what he's doing surfing now. To see him make this transition 
into a heavy motivation towards big wave surfing and just performance surfing. It's a lot of fun. Kai inspires me with his big wave towing to see somebody doing snowboard style tricks on a big wave. Like, that's all we've imagined our whole lives. It's like, what if you could do a backflip here? What if you could do this and then get barreled and then do a backflip out of the barrel? Like, even if it wasn't my brother, it would be like incredible because that was just always been the dream. He wants to get better. He wants to enjoy it. He wants to evolve. He wants to keep pushing. And in pushing himself, he's essentially pushing surfing. A water man, a water woman, is somebody that can go out in the ocean and be comfortable in any condition, right? Any board sport, live off of the ocean, and just be at peace with it. Three, two, one. Our great ancestors, going back millions of years all the way to a single-celled organism, came from the ocean. And I think it's important to know that it's the ultimate playground and it's free, and it's for everybody. We can all be water men and water women. Progression to me is going out and pushing myself and my equipment to that next level. I think it's always exciting to go after something that doesn't really feel achievable until you actually pull it off and then you kind of realize that it was always possible and why hadn't I done it sooner? In reality, anything is possible. It's just convincing ourselves that it is possible. Well, John, good to see you. What's How's up, Rich? Good. Oh, hey, what's up? What's up? Your <laughs> family behind the scenes. So right now we're gonna head over to a trampoline just to kind of get primed. Everything we're doing here in Waco is to get more airtime. You know, spend a lot of time in the ocean doing turns and seeking opportunities for flips, but you come all the way to the middle of Texas, so you get the opportunity to do flips every single wave. One, two, three. Okay, so you're gonna go a little bit lower. You know, I always like you to bounce high on the last bounce. Yep. I want you to bounce a little bit lower, but okay. whippier. Now you're gonna land on your back into the pad. Okay. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Nice. So that gives you the whip feeling of how much yeah. happens when you do this. When you're not getting, it's hard to get height when you're way trying to do a double, you're trying to just get it. You're gonna do both at the same time over there though, right? You're what? On the waves, you have, whip, have that whippy feeling plus the air. Right, right. Um, what we're doing out here is progressions. We're gonna try and take some tricks from the trampoline to the pool, everything from backflip to twisting backflips and hopefully doubles and cork doubles. That's the goal. We're not sure if we're gonna get done now, but that's the goal that's gonna happen. Cork seven? You're doing cork seven, you're gonna pull through and land on your back on the pad. <laughs> this, is lead up for double, this is lead up for a double cork. Okay. One, two, three. Yes. Whoa. Let's see with the pad, but you did it. See, I don't trust him with the pad, man. <laughs> <laughs> Surfing is one of the hardest sports to get really good at because you have to train where people are just trying to free surf most of the time but you need repetition. You need to catch a ton of waves. So that was the ultimate goal with going to Waco is I had the opportunity to surf the same sort of wave consistently and train on tricks. And granted, it's not the ocean. It's not the same when you make a trick in there, but it is the training ground. It is like going to the gym and honing in your skills, getting stronger, getting more powerful, and then bringing it back to the ocean. Just look at this, just, just look at this. Getting the cobwebs out a little bit and uh, trying some new stuff. It's not always easy to humble yourself and learn stuff. You, know? you 
got to fail a little bit. Oh, just, you know, trying to do tricks I haven't done before and both Scott and Matt are really helping me figure it out and break it down, but when you want something so badly, sometimes you put the cart before the horse. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to spin before I get enough height. So work on the takeoff, and then once I'm in the air, I can worry about spinning. Oh man, that's close. What's happening, Kai? You you look at you're getting a little blocked, so everything stops, right? Up, look behind. Look under your. So you're coming around this way. Look, yeah, look under your right armpit. Okay, this is looking under the armpit for the rotation. You're going twisted past the hell. That's it, man. You see how much height you have? Well, I don't, I don't know. No, I just no, didn't no, no, make no. it. No, no, no. You, this is just a big step. Look. Can you see it? You got plenty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. I got to do better. <laughs> that is better, but you need okay, to do so better. Frustration is what you experience before the next level, my dear boy. feeling pretty revved up because I had such lofty ambitions, namely double rotations. Here I am just trying to figure out what is it that I can do to salvage this trip. Oh, so close. Ah, ah. Just when I thought, hey, I could use a weak break, the super swell was on its way. Oh my god, oh no. Wrong along the way. Is this a test? Go, Kai, go! 